So the cup and welcome to another episode for Thailand Tuesday here on the Fun Pod. It's Tuesday, I'm in Thailand. And if you're watching, you can see one of my cats, Snooze. Snooze is rather needy right now, was just crying the whole time while I tried to record this podcast. So now I force her to be on the podcast with me. You want to say something, Snooze? Okay, good job. So, Snooze... You stick with me right here. Um, great podcasting again. And I'm going to start. And I'm going to start not with COVID. Um, <laughs> we're probably coming close to another lockdown again. Um, okay, I start with COVID. Probably coming close to another lockdown again. Uh, more than 3,000 cases in Bangkok right now daily, which is quite a lot. Um, now, uh, construction has been halted in Bangkok and in the south, where COVID also spreads in construction camps mostly. So, um, yeah. That's an update right now, but that's enough for for this week. Um, I actually want to firstly kind of steal some sympathy um, from you because, and now get ready to be like, oh, because this the last three days I suffered food poisoning. And it's the second time in my life and the second time while being in Thailand, um, but only the second time also in 10 years or so. So it happened to me the first week or so I was in Thailand, or the first two weeks I was in Thailand. Um, that I had like really bad food poisoning and I thought I'm gonna die no kidding while sitting or not sitting while hanging over a toilet in Chiang Mai back then and now I had the same feeling again three days ago two days ago actually um, here in my home where I thought oh god it's over <laughs> And I assume it's been a simply bad food. I went to a food court in a shopping mall here, a food court I've been to many, many, many times, um, close to my home. So if, I, if you know where I live, you can guess the shopping mall. Um, well, there are a thousand shopping malls, so you might, you might not be able to guess it, but a famous one. I went to a famous food court, um, very cheap one though. Uh, but yeah, I've been there a thousand times, never had any issues. And now I ordered something different than usual. And yeah, it didn't taste great already when I when I ate it. Um, I think I can I can name the dish I guess because you can't guess the shopping mall from the dish. So the dish was Penang, uh, Penang Mu uh, means Penang curry with pork. And yeah, apparently the pork wasn't great. I think um, if you're watching this video by the way and you see how it touched my face the whole time, now I have hair uh, cat hair in my face after bringing snooze on the podcast. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, you hopefully are not impacted by the cat hair in my face. <laughs> Anyway, so I had Penang Mu, uh, Penang curry with pork, and yeah, the pork didn't taste great. I didn't eat all of it. Um, the night was okayish, but then I woke up in the morning and I thought I'm dying. Um, I went out to campus for a minute to uh, go to a bank, uh, and then I came back and I had a light head. Um, actually, it was a heavy light head. Why is it called light headed? It was a heavy light head. Um, heavy headed? Is that a thing? Native speakers help? Um, yeah, I felt terrible, got really sick. Um, yeah, I had to, they passed out for like two hours, woke up, ran through it to the toilet, and then, yeah, basically looked like the Exorcist movie. Um, whew, that was the first time in 10 years, and like I said, the second time ever in my life, second time in Thailand, and it was terrible. Um, the whole day I was gone, I didn't eat anything, of course, the whole day, also the day after, which was yesterday, I also, I ate like a few bananas, that's like a home remedy that we did when we had like diarrhea and things back then, like when I was a kid, I would eat bananas, I'm like, my stomach isn't feeling good, so I might just eat banana, <laughs> seemed to have worked, I, I didn't eat much, um, I just started eating kind of normal again today, um, so overall, just like two and a half days of suffering is not that bad, but while I suffered, it, I felt like, oh my God, this is the end. Um, this is the end, you know, you know the song? Anyways, I mean, so I thought suffering from food poisoning is maybe a great intro to talk about Thai food. <laughs> and no, not all Thai food will give you food poisoning. It happened to me twice in 10 years, so that's not that bad. No, I think the first time when it happened to me in Chiang Mai, I had street food, and I think the uh, the, the street food, the, the wok that they used just wasn't cleaned, and there was some bad seafood in it before, and I, I ordered some Pad Thai, never had Pad Thai since. <laughs> and yeah, it was also like three days of horror, of exorcist. Anyways, I thought it's a great intro to Thai food, because actually Thai food is awesome. <laughs> 
should, I'm not sure if I should have let in with, hey guys, food poisoning, let's talk about Thai food. But it's just how my brain works, let's talk about Thai food. Hmm. Okay, so my favorite Thai food, just to get this out of the way and everyone asking, what's your favorite Thai food? My favorite Thai food is, um, just like everybody else, uh, Gapau Mu Sap Kai Dao. Kai Dao Suk, uh, to be precise. Gapau Mu is a uh, Gapau is basil, um, the, the Thai spicy, lightly spicy basil. Uh, mu means pork, so it's uh, sp spicy basil pork, usually on rice. I mean, I try to get back into shape, so I try to take it without rice, but usually if you go to a restaurant, you would take it or get it with rice. Um, the rice then could be uh, cow's wai, which is normally white, white rice, but you could also have like black rice or whatever, quinoa if you want to. Um, and right now I try it uh, without rice, as I, as I mentioned. Okay, so that's, that's, that's a very standard go-to thing. Everyone can cook it. They say it's a, the it's a, it's a stupid food because if you don't know what to eat, you just eat gap house. That's what like the, lots of local people say and what they taught me. Like, ah, you eat the stupid food. But I just really like it. And now the street shop, the street for restaurants that know me, they're like, ah, you eat gap house. I'm like, yeah, I eat gap house. Every time I, cook, I come, they ask me, ah, tamada means standard, normal. Like, yeah, yeah, tamada. Uh, so they just give me my gap um, kai dao then means uh, fried egg, and kai, kai sok uh, is then, um, I think, made, done on both sides. Uh, so, yeah, I usually order uh, ga pao mu, kai dao, uh, kai sok. You could also do like ga pao gai, which is a basil with chicken. You could go ga pao nu, nu then meaning uh, beef. Could be like a hantale, seafood, could be a gung for shrimp, so you can just kapow everything basically. And that's usually how Thai food works. You'd have like the main ingredient and then you can just switch like chicken, um, pork, beef, seafood or whatever. It goes for, for every everything. Um, yeah, usually Thai food can be very spicy. Uh, they, they add lots of chili. Uh, so it's a different kind of spice though. Like I, I thought I'm used to eating spicy when I moved here because I eat lots of spicy food in Germany or even in Spain, like pimientos and whatnot. It's like awesome, pimentos el patron uh, and so on. I love it. Uh, the spicy sauce in Spain is fantastic. I used to like this as well. Um, but the Thai spicy is different. Uh, so yeah, that caught me a few times. Like it, it really makes you, the water drip down, sweaty, and so on. Uh, so yes, Thai food is really spicy. So when they ask you if you want it spicy, you could should say nit noi, like a, a little, because if you say yes, they they're gonna be like, <laughs> right, let let me show you, and then you're gonna sweat and die. There's not enough water for you to drink. And I know that they say don't drink water when your tongue is burning. Yeah, I dare you not to drink anything. Try try not to drink anything after you ate like really spicy Thai food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, here's some, some advice. If you order Thai food and it might be spicy and you're not sure, uh, leave some rice on the side. We always leave rice on the side a little bit for the end just so that you can eat something to calm your, your tongue down afterwards. So that's, that's really helpful, I think. So um, yeah, don't forget to leave some rice. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not gonna go through all the dishes in the Thai cuisine right now because there are just way too many. But um, what I wanna say is that it really pays off to try and to listen to the locals. So when you turn around Thailand, and go to a restaurant and then those restaurants especially if it's like street shops they're usually famous for something like the, the main dish that they're serving that lots of people are having uh, it really pays off to pay some attention to that if it's like soup for example if it's a ratna like another form of gravy soup noodle kind of thing if it's good yao like noodle soup for example so to see what the people are having, see what's like featured on the menu and then go for that. They quite likely also have everything else, but they usually focus on a certain kind of food. So it's always, always pays off to go for that. Um, yes. What else do I want to say about food? I had so many pointers and now um, taking care of my, my cat kind of like made me lose my train of thought. Uh, if you are then in, yeah, in Thailand and you travel around, or even if you're just in Bangkok, uh, of course, and you, you, you crave 
Western food. If you're a tourist, I hope you never crave Western food because you're not here for a long time probably. So stick with Thai food. Thai food is amazing while you're traveling. Uh, if you crave Western food, though, of course, there are Western restaurants. There are, it's a German, there are German restaurants. There are Italian restaurants everywhere. No matter where you go, you will find Western restaurants. So don't you worry. But of course, it makes sense to try the local cuisine, right? If you're here, try, try to eat local. And then maybe don't just go to like the most expensive Thai restaurant that you can find. Um, you know, shop local, support some of the local shops, but of course also be aware of, of the hygiene. Um, and I'm not wanna, I don't want to throw like my local shops here under the bus, but if you walk around and you see there's food for 20 baht or something, you know it might not have the highest hygienic standard. So if, you are, if, you, if your stomach is like easily upset, maybe reconsider this. Uh, again, I'm not saying don't support local shops, I say the opposite, but also be aware of some of the hygienic standards. Okay. Um, then what you should be aware of is that there are different regions in Thailand, just in every other country, there are different regions famous for different kinds of food. So northeastern region where I grew up, kind of like my, my Thai youth basically, um, it's Isan, so they have like Isan food. So for example, one of the cultural dishes here in Thailand is Som Dam, papaya salad. Uh, it's made differently in different regions um, of Thailand. So here in central Thailand, it's more Som Dam Tamada, normal Som Dam Thai, uh, Thai, sorry. That's how they call it, which is papaya salad. And you also have then um, crab in there if you want to. Then... <laughs> And the people from Thailand know where I'm going. And then in other regions in Thailand, in the south, but as well as in the north, um, they they have a som tam pupala, <laughs> which is with fermented fish sauce. And it smells terrible. And I hate it. I like som tam Thai. I hate som tam pupala. It's terrible. And it smells so bad. And uh, uh, But lots of Thai people, even like lots of my friends who are not Thai, love it. Um, so yeah, you should smell it, <laughs> and if you can stand the smell, then you try it. Um, okay, but as I said, there are, depends on where you go. There are so many different cultural foods here in Thailand. You should just have an open mind and try it. Yeah, it's there are different curries uh, out there. Geng um green green curry, for example. Penang is, is everywhere. You have yellow curry. You have, I cannot count all the the, the food. Um, that that area is in Thailand. Just go out and try it. And yeah, there's so many different kinds of omelets, for example, with filled with whatever. One of my favorite foods is uh, kaya sai. It's like an omelet filled with like lots of stuff, with, like pork and vegetables and whatnot. Um, so it's crazy. There's so many sweet dishes for dessert that you won't find in any other country. It's insane. I'm, I'm, it would take me like an hour to just name name drop all those dishes without even explaining them yeah so seriously go to a local market if you have a, if you're if you're vaccinated and go to a local market if you're here and just like ask for some local for some recommendations and then just try it it's usually the best thing you can do the first the first thai food i ever had in thailand we went to a street food shop somewhere not too far from kaosan but not in kaosan i don't remember where where exactly because we just walked and got lost and we didn't speak any thai they ask us, what do you want? And we're like, ah. and then he's like, oh, me, me. Like, because we didn't speak Thai back then, didn't speak much English. It's like, yeah, you just tell us. And then he gave us a bowl of whatever. We ate it, and it was good. <laughs> so trust trust the locals. Um, they usually know what's good. And um, if you do it, you can then just maybe do, do a reaction video and then um, maybe comment here and let me know how, how it went. Um, one of my favorite desserts, just to name one, is coconut ice cream, obviously. I also love to drink fresh coconut. Mm, that's really good. Um, eat fresh fruit, uh, pineapples, watermelons, whatnot. Uh, I'm actually getting hungry right now just talking about it. So I'm curing, I'm curing my you know, being hangover from, uh, from my food poisoning uh, while talking about the food. But yeah, um, the safest option... If you ask me to experience street food, like the normal food is to go to a <laughs> to a food court in a shopping mall because at least it's air conditioned in there. Because um, if you try it on the street, you're probably gonna sweat, it's humid and so on. Um, just make sure you don't eat the Penang curry that I had. Oh yeah, so yeah, the last thing I just wanna mention is that uh, some wisdom that I got from my dad. <laughs> my dad came here to Thailand to visit and um, 
he says, yeah, I like spicy food. And then they asked, do you want it? I think it was some dumb. Do you want it spicy? And he's like, yeah, sure. Then he ate spicy and he tried to be a soldier. He's like, I can see him sweating. And he's like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm eating it. And then <laughs> I sent him back to his hotel because I didn't have a, a big enough space back then. Now he could stay with me, of course. Um, and then he calls me at night. I'm like, Dad, what's up? And he's like, it always burns twice. <laughs> So be aware if you try some Thai food, it always burns twice. With this, take care, stay safe, I'll see you soon. Sorry, Carl.